I'll never forget when uh, one of my bands, the uh, lead person in the band, uh, announced he wasn't a Christian anymore. It really hit me hard. Grandma Train. Grandma Train, Pete Stewart, front man. I love his voice. I loved his lyrics, Christian lyrics, loud guitars, drums, bass guitar. Grandma Train was an awesome band. And I was heartbroken when the lead singer, Pete Stewart, renounced his faith. And today I want to talk about what's been going on. That's Pete Stewart right there. Um, I want to talk about what's going on with uh, Kevin Max. DC Talks, Kevin Max renounces his faith, promotes something called a universal Christ. I want to give some insight from my perspective in regards to the scriptures and how we should react to these types of announcements because they affect us. We um, It happens often where these public Christian figures that we look up to and really appreciate their ministries in our lives, then all of a sudden they announce that they don't believe what they used to believe and what does all that mean and, and how do we work through that. So that's the purpose of this video. It's... Um, May 23rd, 2021. I'm the BTWN guy. This is BTWN News. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share, hit the like button and all that. That helps uh, YouTube know that they should share it with other people as well. So Kevin Max and DC Talk, they've been around a long, long time. I'll never forget the, <laughs> the day I went to Worcester, 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 Massachusetts to... I used to live in Worcester, uh, and I went to Worcester, Mass. for a DC Talk concert, and I was excited about it, and there was two acts that opened up for him, and the first one was really horrible. I don't know. Maybe I forget the name, but there were some people up there dancing around, and the, they did not sound good at all, and they looked quite silly, and then they had another band open up. And I remember saying to the person I went with, I was like, man, I hope this group is good. I hope they're edgy and rocky uh, because what I just saw, I didn't, I didn't like it at all. It wasn't my style of music at all. And lo and behold, a group that I had never heard of and many people have never heard of, a group by called uh, Audio Adrenaline took the stage. And man, I loved them. <laughs> I loved them. They were awesome. I really liked them. The first few albums that they did, Audio, uh, Audio Adrenaline. Yeah, that was the name of them. So, <clears throat> and then I liked them better than, than DC Talk. Now, here's the thing that happened with DC Talk in Worcester, Massachusetts. It was, it was the uh, 1990s. I, I was um, interested in hearing what their presentation would be in regards to a gospel presentation. And at that um, concert, Toby Mack took front and center stage and with his hand in his pocket and his other hand holding the microphone and he's looking down at his feet, shuffling his feet, not making eye contact with anybody. He's, <laughs> here's his gospel presentation. Um, we're Christians. And um, we want you to know Christ. And uh, if you're if you're here and you're not a Christian, you probably came with somebody who's a Christian. So talk to them about how to be a Christian. That was it. <laughs> that was so bad. I shouldn't laugh. Somebody sent me an email rebuking me for laughing. But um, very bad presentation of the gospel. And even later on in years, I have seen very poor gospel presentations from Toby Mac. Maybe you know of a good presentation. We always want to be clear when we preach the gospel, and um, we always want to include what the Bible says and how people can have peace with God. Repent and believe. Repent, turn from your sins. Christ lived and died and rose again so that all who believe on him uh, will have eternal life. So, we want to make that clear in, in all aspects at all times. But I remember, um, well, let me tell you where we're going with this. I'm going to read an article about Kevin Max, and then we're going to listen to Kevin Max's uh, 
own, from his own mouth, we're going to hear about what he believes. So those of you who who are like, hey, Tim, why are you slamming somebody again? I'm not here to say that Kevin Max isn't a Christian. I'm not saying that he's going to hell. I'm saying that his theology has left what the Bible says. I'm saying, I'm going to tell you, he's going to tell you from his own words that he doesn't believe what the Bible says anymore and um, that he believes different things now. And I don't, he, to, from my perspective, he's not making conclusions that a true believer would. That doesn't mean he's not a true believer. Only God knows. I, I do realize that. But we do need to be evaluating things, these things and, and um, knowing uh, how to respond to them. So remember that song, what if I stumble? What if I fall? Uh, what if I, you know, in my actions, like, um, where's the chorus? chorus what if i stumble what if i fall this is dc talk one of their most fa- most uh popular songs what if i stumble what if i call fall what if i lose my step and make fools of us all will the love continue will, like will you still love me as as an artist as a person as a human being if if i fall um and he was talking about moral failure and obviously uh, denouncing one's faith is a moral failure uh, when when my walk becomes a crawl, what if I stumble? What if I fall? Will you continue to love me? Basically, it's the we love you, Kevin Max. Uh, we want you to be firm in your faith and in the biblical faith. Um, so, kind of like a, a fulfilling prophecy of this this song. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of people have written articles about um, Kevin Max. A lot of people. And I am going to fall upon this one, Protestia, because these guys are discernmenty. They're they're very discernment, and they give you the facts straight up. They don't beat around the bush. So I am going to read the Protestia article for you, and then, like I said, we're going to listen to Kevin Max in his own words. That's where we're going. But before we get there, let me encourage you to go to btwnnews.com. If you have not entered your email address in this yellow bar to receive my newsletter, please do that. And if you do not like the commercials on this YouTube channel and all these videos, go click on support our ministry. And then you can click on support on Patreon. Everybody who gives any amount on Patreon gets these videos. They've already watched this video and they've already watched it without commercials. You can also send a check, which some people do. Thank you very much. I get um, some checks in, in the mail each month. Thank you so much for those who do that. And then you can also give on PayPal. So please consider that. Okay, here's the article from Protestia. DC Talks Kevin Max renounces his faith, promotes universal Christ. Universal is a term that when you hear it in regards to someone saying that that's what they believe in a universal church, universal Christ, universal salvation, whatever you put universal in front of, 99.9% of the time, that is a theology that the Bible does not teach and you need to run from. Here's the DC Talk guys, a more recent picture of them. Um, Here's uh, how the article is written. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. 1 John 2.19 Meaning when somebody walks away from the faith, denounces their faith, they were never of the faith. We believe at this YouTube channel that when you are saved, you are saved because God saves you. And he doesn't ever let you go. (laughs) He doesn't ever let you go. Uh, He never unsaves you. Ex-Jesus freak Kevin Max has announced on social media that he considers himself an ex-vangivical. Ex-vangivical. And that he has been deconstructing his faith for years. Deconstructing, another bad term. For all intents and purposes, revealing himself to have become a progressive pagan who has renounced Orthodox Christianity and now holds to some weird form of belief in the quote-unquote universal Christ. Max 53 
who is best known as one third of the trio DC Talk, has spent the last year taking pot shots at quote unquote narrow minded judgmental evangelicals. And he got the ball rolling to an even greater degree on Twitter when he said, Hello, my name is Kevin Max. <clears throat> I am an hashtag exvangelical. He followed that up with a few more points of clarification, writing, I've been deconstructing, reconstructing, progressing, whatever you wish to call it for decades. I've been in the outsider misfit, misfit seeker club for a long time now. Thank you for welcoming me in, but I've always been here. Happy Saturday, all. Thank you for your comments. He, he got a lot of heat from his tweet. And some of that is frustration, a little bit of a pushback on that. Lest there be any doubt, the singer <clears throat> whose Twitter bio describes himself as a leftist, mystic, and liberal also came out as a pro-LGBTQIA <clears throat> and in a later tweet, came out as pro-choice, as in pro-life pro with exceptions. Well, here's his tweet. <clears throat> this isn't troubling. <sighs> this, this should, if anything, this should tell us to pray for Kevin Max and pray for anybody who would take Kevin Max's lead in, these, in this shift from professing uh, what he used to and what, now what he holds to. His tweet, <clears throat> anti-war, pro-peace, anti-hate, pro-love, pro-LGBTQIA, pro-BLM, pro-open-mindedness, anti-narrow-mindedness, pro-utopia, anti-white nationalist agenda, pro-equality, pro-vax, pro-music, anti-one-percenters, Pro poor, pro misfits, pro Jesus, etc. He further posted the song lyrics from a recent album explaining that it encapsulates where he is right now spiritually. He says he still believes in Jesus, but it's pretty evident it's a deity of his own making, according to the lust of his flesh, with his talk of the glowing universal Christ. So here's a song to clarify his position. Like, this doesn't clarify anything. It just really kind of is confusing. But this is his upcoming album. His upcoming album is Sad Astronauts or Astronauts Sad. I don't know. Here's the song. It's okay to be estranged from everything that you were taught. And it's okay to unpack all the hopeless baggage that you bought. I know the sun it never shines in the same place twice, and I know that life is better with a trusted vice. But you will change when you cave to the universal Christ. And it's okay for you to lose the shame from all that church abuse, and it's okay for them to see you don't believe in man's inerrancy. Uh-oh man's inerrancy it can only be referring to um believing that scripture is written by man and not by god that is that that's really troublesome i know the sun it never shines in the same, in the place you hide i know you think it's better sh shrouded in secret and lies but you'll change when you embrace the glowing universal christ Ay, 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 ay. Hmm. Sad. It's really sad. It's really unfortunate, w folks. When you, when you say, "I don't believe Scripture anymore," I don't believe all of Scripture anymore. You've just lost your, your whole foundation for believing anything. If you don't believe in Scripture, then what is your standard for truth? You don't have one. And everything you say uh, could be wrong, is wrong, could be wrong. You could be right, you could be wrong, but you can't know because you have no standard for truth. 
Here's um, a 45-minute interview he did, Decent Christian Talk Podcast. This is from 2020. And they just asked him, what do you mean by D... Uh, what is that term? Well, anyway, what... De decomposing, de de uh, deconstructing. That's it. Sorry, folks. Deconstructing. What do you mean by deconstructing? What, what what do you mean by that? So here's his answer, and we'll listen to a few minutes of this, and I'll give some comments. Yeah, um, I like to call it deconstruction reconstruction because you're always, I mean, any person that's really changing, um every day, which we do, you're going to deconstruct or you're going to reconstruct. So it's a combination of both of those things. Um, um, God does not change. God does not deconstruct, reconstruct. I've been deconstructing for decades. You know, I've never really, I've always been progressing, as you can say, and then sometimes I regress. <laughs> um, but I think uh, where I'm at right now is I, I've really just kind of gone on a journey to find out what I truly believe in by reading a lot, thinking a lot, keeping, keeping my eyes and ears open. Um, I've definitely been pretty vocal about my thoughts online and, uh, it's met with some, you know, some, uh, people that are, just don't agree with me, which is great. Um, but I've always told him, I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a believer, I, but I'm questioning a lot of things and I've got a lot of, I've got more questions than answers, you know, and that's reflected in my music. And I think it's always been reflected in my music from day one and definitely sad astronauts is definitely on that, on that plane of, of lyrical content as well. Uh, and so when sad astronauts comes out and starts you know, giving people these songs, I'll kind of hear a little bit w about what I'm going through right now, which is great. I touched on it a little bit on Radio Technica and uh, obviously got bold on a couple of songs. And um, I had a lot of I had a lot of freedom in that. It was very liberating to do that, you know, as a member of DC Talk to write a song that's, you know, Jesus, I love you, but your followers freak me out. That was that was great couple things to question Christianity due to Christians um, is to not understand what Christianity is about. Christianity is not about um, Christians being perfect. It's about Christians being non-perfect and acting uh, like sinners and needing a savior. Uh, so to point at believers and the way that believers or professing believers act and use that for justification for, well, you know, I don't know about Christianity. I don't know that the Bible is true because look at all these people who don't, who claim the name of Christ, who don't act like Christians. The other thing is, um, in regards to this and some other content I've been reviewing recently that I may bring to you, these people, they wrestle with scripture I've been, I have a lot of questions. You know, I was reading this and that and the other thing. It just didn't make sense to me. I was, I've been wrestling with scripture for a long time. Um, I tweeted the other day after I heard a couple of people say that, like, do not wrestle with scripture. Submit to scripture. And, th and this is, I believe, what's behind a lot of people who come to the conclusion that the Bible's not true. They refuse to submit to scripture scripture is quite binary there's it's black and white and it some of it is difficult to understand but you know what the meaning is you know what it's teaching for the most part and they if you don't like it then you start to deconstruct your whole faith do I really believe this? Do I really look at look around me and look at the people around me and the experiences that I have? Is does is the Bible true? And and then it all falls apart when you give up the authority of Scripture. It all falls apart. 
Don't wrestle with scripture. Submit to it, whether you like it or not. You know, um, yeah, because so, I meant it. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it, it, it makes me nervous when anybody is um, so black and white in their faith and not willing to recognize that. Um, I guess maybe the word I'm looking for is absolute, because there are things that are, I think we should all question and investigate in our faith. Uh, to make sure that our faith is our own faith and not just what's been handed to us or passed down to us. Um, so I, I get. <laughs> I think there's a Bible. I should have looked it up. There's like a Bible verse that says what we've learned. We've learned from others. It's been handed down. We have scripture. We have church history. We have theologians who have done heavy studying investigation of scriptures and help us to understand it so that we don't have to do all that work, but we can read what they've written about the scriptures. We can study the scriptures and we can see what they have studied and what they have found and find that um, it, it's agreeable with the, the testimony of the Holy Spirit within us and what we read in scripture. Um, <sighs> and then the interviewer referred to, he has a problem with Christians who are quite binary in their thinking. There's, there's absolute truth. His, his, his comment was against absolute truth. Hmm. Absolute truth. If you're against absolute truth, how could you be for that statement? I'm, I am against absolute truth. Wait, that's an absolute statement. It all falls apart again. I get frustrated when people, um, come after somebody who is deconstructing their faith, because I think that's a great place to be that you're asking those questions and investigating what you believe and who you are. Um, so what, what, uh, what would you say to somebody who's going through that process? I would just suggest that they continue to, to, you know, uh, be open to learning and to changing and to progressing. And when you're, when you, when you give into the fear of like, Oh my gosh, I'm asking questions or, Oh man, I don't know if I believe in this anymore. I mean, that's you're giving into the, the the same fear that you know kept us from progressing as people for so long you know it's it's been um the, the you know the the totali tot totalitarian fear that's constant in my opinion in a lot of evangelical churches you know have made people regress over time and i feel like anybody out there going through it they should just embrace it and you know, if they're a believer, they should they should have these deep conversations with the God they believe in, and and really, you know, struggle with it, talk to them about it. You know, I I believe in 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 a God of the universe, and I believe that He can hear me, and that and that in itself is just plain. Con and and I would ask Kevin, well, how do you know, like when you pray to this God? that's not the God of scripture. Like, how does he talk to you? How does, like, how do you know? Like, this is just a feeling inside you that, oh, <laughs> like the article said, he's trying to become comfortable with a, with a God that he likes. And when you, you talk about universal Christ, that's, I can't help but think it, it what is what his belief is that Christ is God to everybody and he's universal and his the benefits of his life death and burial resurrection whatever he believes or doesn't believe about who Christ was that that applies to everybody no matter who you are and uh, he probably has a really super low view of the doctrine of hell and judgment eternal judgment because that's well, it sounds like where he's going. Kind of crazy, but if I believe that, then I truly believe that he cares about my progression and and asking questions. And why, if he if he's throwing out scripture, why would he believe that this universal God cares about him? He's got no reason to think that. If he has no standard or foundation um, from scripture, folks, God exists. And he has spoken. Okay. That's the foundation of, of what I think in regards to Christianity. God exists and he has spoken. And that speaking 
is in Scripture, and he's revealed himself, and that's how we know what is true and what is not true. Wanting to know, you know, uh, what is real and what isn't real, you know? And I don't think the God that I believe in is going to, you know, just all of a sudden ignore me because I don't believe every single thing that's written down somewhere. You know? And that is a reference to Scripture. Since I don't believe what the Bible says anymore, I don't think God is going to abandon me. No, I don't think God's going to abandon him either. I think that that God is going to deal with him justly. And if God has grace on him, he will save him or he has saved him and he'll bring him out of this utter pit of confusion and uh, anti-Christian thinking. We can we can pray and hope for that. You know. Would you say that this theme, this theme of deconstructing, uh, parallels the theme for the Sad Astronauts debut? Um, yes and no. I mean, Sad Astronauts is 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 really again, it's a fifty fifty thing. It's Eric and I, and so. Okay, so he's going to go continue on about his album that may be out already sad astronauts dc talks kevin max renounces his faith and promotes universal christ sad sad um what are your comments leave your comments below like this video um share it with others subscribe do all that stuff um let me know what you think was this video helpful heartbreaking for sure um that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. Pray for Kevin Max and for people who he's, he, who he's influencing. And until next video, folks, I pray that God would bless each and every one of you. Thanks.